difference in density between the top and the bottom. But maybe we are still in the case that if a small element here wants to go up, it cannot make it to the top because it is cooled down by the surroundings. The system is still stable. And then there is one critical temperature gradient, this one, delta T <coughs> critical. And this is the point where the material here is so light and it's so hot that when if it starts to move up, the surroundings cannot stop it. And suddenly, the whole layer will start to convect. Okay? So here, it is the onset of convection. And if this happens, then hot material will go up, cold material will go down, and you set up convection cells, the material will start to move, and because of that, the temperature gradient will be different, and it is going to be like this. There are going to be two thermal boundary layers, and in the middle, of the layer, the temperature gradient is not as high. So what is convection? Convection is an instability which spontaneously starts if the temperature gradient between the bottom and the top is too high. Then it will spontaneously arise and find the cells or the geometry of this convection which is the most suitable for this kind of flow. And the reason why convection arises is because convection is a more efficient way to get rid of the heat. It is more efficient to bring the hot material to the top and let the cold material sink and transport the heat by actually moving the material than just doing it by thermal <coughs> conduction. Convection and conduction. A very uh, good example of that is, of course, the central heating of a house. Somewhere in the cellar, we have a kettle which makes hot water. But if we would not pump the water around to bring the heat up, we would never have a heated room. And you would all be sitting here with your jackets on. So transporting the heat by moving the material, that is what convection is. And convection is something that spontaneously arises if you reach a critical condition. And that way, the heat of the Earth is transported out much more efficiently than it would be possible by conduction only. So this is the main message of the first part of my lecture. And the way to quantify or to calculate whether a fluid will be convecting or not convecting is by calculating this Rayleigh number. The Rayleigh number, Ra, is a very famous dimensionless number from thermodynamics. Um, it is calculated like this. This one is the density of the material, rho. G is the acceleration of gravity. Remember, we talked about gravity. <coughs> Alpha is the coefficient of thermal expansion, how much the material expands when you heat it. The delta T, the temperature difference between the top and the bottom. And D to the third. D is the thickness of the layer. And notice that this is a power 3 here. And then below the line in the formula, we divide by the viscosity, mu, and K, which is the 
thermal conductivity. Remember, that is what we have seen in the previous picture. So this dimensionless number will get higher if gravity is high, if the material expands very much when you heat it up, if the temperature gradient is high, and if the layer is very thick. And it will get lower if the viscosity gets high, and if the thermal conductivity is very high. And if this number is more than about 1,000, the fluid will start spontaneously to convect. There is nothing you can do about it. It will spontaneously arise. So, if we make delta T high enough, with everything else constant, it will start to rise. But we could also decrease the viscosity or increase the temperature difference or increase the thickness of the layer and we could induce convection. And the best example of convection that you all must be familiar with is in a pot of water or soup of, or oil in your kitchen. Um, if you let the light in your kitchen shine on the surface of your soup, then you will see that the surface is wobbly. It is not completely smooth like a mirror. And this wobbliness is because normally you heat your soup uh, with quite a strong flame or with electrical heating, and the temperature gradient is so high that the fluid is convecting. So next time you, you fry your French fries or you make a soup, have a look at the surface of your fluid, and you will see that it is wobbly because there are convection cells inside it. In fact, when you put your fluid onto the flame, and you look at the surface uh, in a mirror fashion, you will see that it is completely straight. And this wobbliness arises when you have heated it up strong enough. Now, for many, many years, it has been known that uh, whatever you do to calculate this Rayleigh number for the mantle of the Earth, you will get very high numbers. Here are some estimates, 6,000, 600,000, or 4 million. There is a lot of discussion about what this number actually is, and parts of the mantle, different parts of the mantle, probably have different really numbers, because the viscosities uh, are not known, and so forth, and so forth. But everybody agrees that the really numbers in the mantle are far higher than what is required for convection. And this has been proposed even quite a long time before plate tectonics was accepted by Arthur Holmes, who calculated that the mantle must be convecting as long as, of course, it is a viscous fluid. If you have a solid, then the mantle cannot convect. So the mantle of the Earth is convecting. I think there is general agreement about it. It is convecting because the Rayleigh number is too high, and this convection process is very efficient to get rid of the heat of the inner part of the Earth. The convection is strong, and it's a, it's a very, very important motion. It is really the heat engine which drives the plate tectonics, but it is very slow. Of course, we know that the mental viscosity is very, very high, and to see it as a viscous fluid, we have to wait for many, many millions of years. So you shouldn't think that the mantle is convecting at a scale of days. No, it is convecting over tens and hundreds of millions of years, very, very slowly, but it is convecting. Can we have a pause, Ma? So, the problem with understanding mental convection is that it is much, much more complicated than the convection in a simple fluid. So, this is one of the computer simulations about the flow patterns in the mental that one could imagine. And if you now just think about the mental as one homogeneous gray zone, a big, big outer part of the Earth, 
then convection would be quite simple. But in fact, we have lithosphere, which is not only quite strong, floating on top of the, uh, the mantle and the asthenosphere, but it is also a thermal insulator. Okay? It actually shields parts of the Earth from losing heat. And then there are these subduction zones of cold material going down, and then there is the mid-oceanic ridges where the mantle melts, and you start to extract material from it. And all these processes make that convection in the Earth is really a very, very complicated process. But before we go into that, let's have a look at some very simple convections. Convection in fluids like honey or water or soup has been uh, studied for a long, long time. And uh, these are results of uh, some very, very beautiful uh, classic experiments where the experimentalists have taken a layer of a fluid and this fluid doesn't just convect but it also changes its optical parameters a little bit. When it is hot, it reflects light a little bit better than when it is cold. So when you look from the top at this layer and the fluid starts to convect, you will start seeing these dark and white lines. Maybe some of you have seen in the glass of tea, for example, when you put in sugar, then you see some reflections from these different uh, refractive index uh, parts of the fluid. So this is what you should imagine. And this convection here is simply cylindrical rollers. Okay, That's why you see the horizontal lines. Everywhere where it is cold and going down, it is dark, and everywhere where it is uh, uh, warm and coming up, it is a light. So this very simple convection is cylindrical uh, rollers. But if you change the conditions, you can also make the uh, pattern of convection in uh, square boxes. It's even very difficult to imagine, but this is what is happening. There are completely four-fold symmetry circulation cells, in the middle it's going down and along these edges it is coming up. And then again, if you change the conditions, you could make hexagonal patterns of convection cells. If you make uh, the fluid a little bit heterogeneous, you drop a few stones into it or something like that, then the convection cells will become irregular. And uh, you will get patterns like this. So regular convection cells in the earth mantle are very difficult to imagine because there are just too many heterogeneities. And also, the earth is of course